live video, something I've done for 360 days in a row. Today I'm about to brain dump everything that's in my mind about going live, how to go live, and also how to engage with an audience while live and other fun things that you can do too here in this video. If you're here watching live, because we are live right now, actually. This is a little meta, but thank you again. Appreciate you. Say hello to your friends if you're here. And if you happen to be watching the replay, hashtag team replay in the comment section to let me know you're watching later. I appreciate you. Let's start the show. Here we go. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave. With no fee required, the income stream with Pat Pretty incredible. We're only five days away from our one year anniversary of going live. And like I said, I have so many things that I want to share with you. I don't necessarily have a structure other than we're just going to go from start to finish. And I want to tell you some of uh, the systems that I use, some of the equipment and the software that I use to just give you everything. Because if you want to go live and you want to go live consistency, I've obviously have proven that it can work. Now, what are the benefits of going live? Let's talk about even the why first behind before we start getting into the how to. I think it's always important to, as Simon Sinek says, start with why. And so why go live? Well, going live is amazing because you can have a direct connection to your audience. You can build a deeper relationship with them. You can actually engage with people in real time. You can collect feedback from things that you're working on or you're discussing literally in real time. And it gives you an opportunity to increase your communication skills, to increase your storytelling skills and presentation skills, which can then transpire into other parts of your business and your life and your work too. Going live, yes, can help you build an audience, but to me, it's about building a stronger audience, not necessarily getting found by others. Now, that being said, I do know a lot of people who do go live, who then find a lot of other people as a result of going live, especially on platforms like YouTube, where there is an algorithm and depending on what it is that you're talking about and how it, uh, the thumbnail and the title is, uh, that can all play a role as far as other people finding you. But over the course of the last 360 days, and I will have a summary video about the last 365 days after the live stream ends and summarizing my thoughts, giving some advice, very similar to what I'm talking about today, but maybe a little bit more confined to the idea of uh, growth and analytics and discoveries versus um, just the kind of how to like we're going to talk about today. Um, it hasn't done much, in fact, for growing the channel. In terms of subscriber growth, which I will tell you isn't everything, and it shouldn't be the center, but it is a sign of how new people are finding your stuff and how you can engage with new people after. The live streams haven't done as much as the pre-recorded videos or VODs, videos on demand or on-demand videos, um, as I had thought. And I have proven that that to be the case here. Now, there are other people who, like I said, go live. And every time they go live, I see a jump in subscribership because of the nature of what it is that they're talking about. The more that I've honed in, and I'll tell you about this when we talk about coming up with content for going live, especially on a consistent basis, the more that I've been honed in on what the live stream is going to be about, the topic, and having, again, the click and stick strategy, the title and the thumbnail, and a hook in the beginning, then yes, it'll get found by more people even after during the replay and when it's there as a VOD. But in most cases, my pre-recorded videos have completely uh, outperformed the live videos in terms of exposure, in terms of new traffic sources, that sort of thing. So I just wanna preface this by saying that I think ideally it's a mix of both live to strengthen the audience that is there already and potentially find some new people and videos on demand that will find those new people who can come into the system, who can come in at the bottom of your uh, pyramid of fandom if you've read my book, Superfans, that to me would be the perfect mix. And you'll see moving forward after day 365 that I'll be still doing lives, but just not every day. That extra time that I'm getting back will be put into other aspects of my business, including more on-demand videos like the one that came out earlier today where I revealed my YouTube earnings from 2020 here on this channel in case you wanna check that out for later. Anyway, thank you so much. And before we start diving into the how-to, we got McKellen in the house. We got Karen, Bill, Jeff, Beth, Romer, Peasant Uprising, Stephanie, Grandma Goody, our amazing um, moderators, Grandma Goody, Stephanie, uh, Peasant Uprising, 
K Lock Comedy, as well as uh, Just Samson and Karma Cashflow. Um, but I don't know where those guys are. Tina in the house, CV, welcome in. Thank you so much. So, yes, we're talking about live streaming today. Who here has done live streams before? Let me know if you've done live streams before. And who here wants to go a little bit more into them or start them if you haven't yet? Um, you are becoming serious about it. You want to do it right. Uh, all the things that we're going to talk about today should hopefully help you in one way or another. Now, this is the way that I've done it, and I'm going to show you different tools and processes and such, but there are multiple ways to do it. Like, there are multiple ways to start businesses. Like, there are multiple ways to run anything. But I'm going to share with you the efficiencies I've learned over time, the tools I use, and some of the strategies I put into play to make the most out of it and get the most out of this time. So, let's talk about the start. So, first of all, we need some equipment to go live, right? Um, and, and we have to choose where we want to go live. Uh, we have to make some decisions. And... For me, I chose to put my live stream home on YouTube. There's many other places to go live. There's Twitch, there's Instagram Live, there was once Periscope and Meerkat. Anybody remember Meerkat from back in the day? That's kind of when live streaming really started. There's Facebook Lives, obviously. In my opinion, again, this is my opinion, I feel that you should pick one to be your home. There are tools out there like repurpose.io and Restream, I think is Restream is the one that I actually meant to say, uh, that allow you to stream in one place to then feed to all the others. Now, that is a strategy. That is a way for you to get in front of new audiences in different places. But again, to me, the purpose of Live is to strengthen the relationship that you have with those who have found you, who have just found you, to allow for interaction and engagement, and to allow for exactly what's happening in the chat right now, connections amongst each other. That is something that doesn't necessarily happen in videos on demand. Arif, thank you so much for the super chat. So choose one home because if you choose to restream into all these different places, what is that engagement like? What is the community like on each of these places? Imagine that I was streaming this on Facebook and Instagram right now and on Clubhouse and all these other things. Clubhouse is a little separate, but what if I was like, Hey, YouTube viewers, hold up. I'm going to answer a question from somebody on Facebook right now. Hey, Facebook, what's up, Facebook? It, you already feel left out. It's hard to make the community feel whole when the community is dispersed across many different platforms. Again, that is just my opinion, but I feel like choosing one to be your home and making it so great that people start talking about it that even if they were on another platform and they hear about it and you talk about it, they're going to go, Okay, well, I'll come to YouTube for you, Pat, or I'll come to you, YouTube for you, Brandon, or you, Peasant Uprising, or you, Daniela, if that makes sense. Mr. Camera Junkie says, YouTube is my live stream home. So I feel that not only will you able be able to sort of consolidate your audience into one spot and engage with them more and have them have a better experience, but also just, number one, for production purposes, makes your life a lot easier because things break the more things you add in. The best part, as Elon Musk says, is no part. So let's remove as much of the friction and as much of the, the breakables as possible, if that makes sense. Um, in addition to that, you can learn how to master that platform. YouTube's algorithm is different than, live, than, than Facebook's algorithm, which is different than Instagram Live's algorithm, which is different than Twitch's algorithm. When you focus on one, you can go all in on it and learn everything there is to learn about it, if that makes sense. And imagine once you start to grow, imagine if you had members that um, we're on both. There's different experiences for members who are paying members on each of those platforms. So this is my case for not streaming on multiple pl platforms. And as Dr. Severin Brian here says and confirms, yes, I agree. I hate when people stream to multiple platforms because you can't see the engagement on all the others. I live stream only to YouTube. Your choice is your choice. Depending on what it is that you do, you can find a home in many different places for your specific content and you can build a community there. Gamers typically choose Twitch. Um, but people in business, not usually on Twitch, but they might do something on YouTube, for example, like me. So again, that's up to you. You'll need to make that choice. Now, of course, in order to stream on that platform, you'll need some software or something to be able to do that. And there's one I recommend if you are a Mac user more than any other, and that is Ecamm Live, which is what I'm using right now. It allows me to do some fun things like put in buttons like that and, you know, little fun things. And I'll share with you what I'm pushing in just a moment. But Ecamm Live allows me to do that. I also love Ecamm because, number one, I can bring guests in, too, which you've seen me do on our Milestone episodes and, and every once in a while, too, which is really easy. Just send a person a link. They don't have to download anything. It all, it all like, happens automatically, which is pretty cool. So I can bring a guest on. We can have a guest on live with us. Um, and then at the same time, you can record 
your live streams separately. I do record each of these in case I wanna pull something out and have it be higher quality than taking it from an already compressed video on YouTube and then compressing it even more. Um, so that's a, a, definite, a definite benefit to it too. And it's, it's just very, very simple and very friendly like many Mac programs are. So again, if you'd like to check that out, you, I, I do have a video on YouTube. If you look up best live streaming platform for Mac, uh, Pat Flynn or best live streaming Pat Flynn, you'll find a video there where I walk you through how to use the thing. Unfortunately, if I screen share, it removes a lot of the elements because I'm it, it wants to remove the screen share to make room for the thing that I'm gonna be screen sharing. So by trying to screen share the software, it's actually hard to do. So you can watch that video if you'd like, or if you'd like to check out the affiliate link, you can go to smartpassiveincome.com slash ecam or patflynn.com slash ecam if you'd like to, to check it out. Um, you get a special deal if you go through that link. So patflynn.com slash ecam, E-C-A-M-M. -M. Uh, or maybe, it might be ecam lab, I can't remember. Anyway. So that's the software that I use and I've used it um, every day. Um, StreamYard is another one that a lot of people use. That one is another one that is a fan favorite right now that's both, uh, both useful for PC and for Mac. It is browser-based, so that's a common one. Uh, Streamlabs is one that I use when I stream on the Pokemon channel. And the reason why I stream on the Pokemon channel is because there's some specific tools that I use that are PC only. So Streamlabs, um, and that does work for PC and Mac as well. And then finally, OBS. OBS and Streamlabs are very similar. OBS means open broadcasting software, and that is free. That's the that's the only free one I think that's available that does all the jobs that you might need to. It's a little bit complicated. Those last few that I mentioned are quite complicated. StreamYard is one that's uh, a good one, and then I use Ecamm Live here for um, for Apple. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, Stephanie, for sharing the links. Okay. We'll talk about format. I see your question, Michaelin, in just a sec, but we're still talking about tools just to kind of get on board, right? So let's talk about equipment now. We've got the software that we need to go live and you can connect that typically through an integration on Ecamm Live. I just had to sign into YouTube through Ecamm and now I can actually connect the two things together. And the same thing happens with all those other platforms too, whether you're on Twitch or, or wherever else. Um, but let's talk about equipment. So you'll need a, you'll need a camera of some kind. And yes, you can hook up multiple cameras and have multiple camera angles, which I've done before, but I want you to start simply. I want you to have as little friction as possible. So a webcam can be best. A webcam can be best. best. But I will say, um, your built-in webcam on your laptop or computer, that ain't it. That ain't it. You're gonna need to get something like at least a webcam. I do have some webcams lying around somewhere so this webcam here is a Logitech Brio, and I really like this one because it's a 4K version. If it'll, so here's a Logitech Brio. It just plugs in via USB right here on the back, and it can actually, yes, be put onto a tripod. This is about $200, and the reason why I like this one, it's a higher end webcam. It's not quite your DSLR camera or anything like that that's streaming yet, but this one's nice because it's compact, it's very durable, and it plugs in just via USB, and that's all you need to know. It reads it, all these things read it as an input device and you just select it and boom, you're ready to go. And this has a nice wide angle, which is really much more interesting to look at within a longer form live stream with a lot of background. As you can see here, I'm using a wide angle camera lens right now. And I'll tell you what I'm using specifically in just a moment. And I, and I do have a link. I think it's patflynn.com slash live setup. It's either live dash setup or live setup. Um, Stephanie, if you wanna just again, verify that for me, that'd be really great for the video stuff, patflynn.com slash live setup. Um, that is where you can find all the equipment linked to and all that stuff. So I'm not gonna give you affiliate links for all those things, but if you'd like to check that out, all the equipment I use, the high-end stuff and even beginner options too are there, but I'm just gonna go over the components so we can think about them. But this webcam is really great. There is another webcam that's very popular, the Logitech C920, um, which is decent. That streams at 1080 and typically you won't even need to stream up at that level. But again, I like the wide angle of the Logitech Brio. What I'm streaming on right now is actually a mirrorless camera. It's a Canon EOS R. It's a thousand dollar camera with a $700 lens on it. And the lens is really cool because I can have this wide angle, but I can have this really cool bokeh effect. Bokeh effect means I have blurry background and I can even stand out. If I have it too blurry, in fact, however, a lot of people say, oh, that's just a green screen. And then I pull something in the back and they're like, oh, okay, I guess it's just a really good camera. So I usually have the aperture to about, 
you know, three to five as opposed to 1.8 so that it's a little bit uh, more realistic. Um, but you can play around with it and, and that's what I would recommend. Whatever you get involved with, you wanna make sure you play around with it first. Um, day 360, respect, that's right. We've come full circle, if you will. Uh, see what I did there? Anyway, there's one more camera that I can recommend. And it's this camera right here that I'll show you. Now this isn't hooked up right now, although I'll show you how cool it is when you have like a second camera. So this camera right here is actually just on one of these arms and I have a clamp to clamp to my desk. This is a Sony ZV-1 and I really love this camera because it's small, compact, but it also is really good quality and it's pretty versatile. You can use it for a lot of things. And if I were to switch to that camera right now, you'll see, hey everybody, good to see you. Um, anyway, it's not set up properly right now, but this is what I use to show the wheel. So when we spin the wheel, I have this focus on the wheel and then we can actually see what is on the wheel. And then I can switch back and forth just like this, which is really cool. And as you can see, just one additional camera angle adds a completely different feel to what a stream might look like. And it's kind of impressive, right? I've actually done this live in presentations before, and that's really cool. Uh, people really enjoy that. So this is the Sony ZV-1, as you can see. You don't even need this microphone on it. This was for another project I was working on. So let me take that out. Actually, just let me take this whole thing out. Okay. So this camera here, very, very compact and it has a very nice flip screen so you can see yourself. And I use that for uh, I use that for a lot of courses and stuff too. So in addition to video though, you need to sound audio-tastic, okay? Audio is actually more important than video. And whenever anybody argues with me about that, all I have to do is share this example. The idea that, okay, imagine you're watching a video and the video quality is bad, but the audio is fine. You'll still watch it all the way through. But imagine a video where the video quality is amazing, but the audio is barely audible and it just is crackling and it doesn't sound good. You're leaving, right? Even if the video quality is great. So audio is very, very important, obviously. So yeah, I did use, to use that second camera for story time, but I just had moved it around so much it was getting kind of annoying and I love to reduce as much friction as possible with the work that I do. So audio is really key. Now there's many different ways to in fact do audio. You can have your podcasting mic. If you're a podcaster, you can just you can just use your podcasting mic. I think there's no shame with having a professional look with a microphone and if you wanted like a mic flag like this, impactpbs.com that you can like hook up on here. You can just put your podcast logo on there, whatever logo, maybe even just have like a live stream looking thing just to kind of look a little bit more broadcasty if you want to go down that route. And you can have it, just make sure it's not like, hey guys, Pat here, welcome to the live stream. That'd be That'd be silly. So you could just use a regular podcasting mic in the way that you already have it set up. This mic that I have here is an Audio-Technica ATR2100, the new one that's available is the 2100X. But I really like this mic because it plugs in via USB. That other mic that I had, this one here, is a $400 USB mic called a PR40 uh, from Heil. You can sound the same basically with this mic here. Not, not quite the same, but to the normal listener, it's not gonna matter. And if it's on video, this mic works really well. Now, unfortunately, again, similar to that mic, this mic has to be really close to your mouth. And so it can get in the way, which is why you have some other options. You can use a lapel mic. A lapel mic is one that you hook up to your uh, vest or to your blouse or to your shirt. And it's just kind of out of the way. A lot of very prominent YouTubers use lapel mics because they can just control the audio no matter what, wherever they go, it's always with them, that kind of thing. Sometimes it records into an external device. Sometimes it records just right into the computer. Either way, if you're going live, you can use a lapel mic too, as so long as that audio can be read as an input. So you may need a mixing board or a soundboard or something to make that work. I use currently this mic right here. This is a shotgun mic. And it's cool because I can just have it right off a of camera, like literally right where that disappears is where I have it. It's just right here. And what's really nice is it's out of the way it picks up the sound as like a projection right from, that's why it's called the shotgun. It's like, if you imagine like a, like a burst of, of, of a waveform capturing area coming right from the mouth of it, um, it removes a lot of background noise. This is a Rode, R-O-D-E, NTG-5. This is an NTG-5. There's a lot of NTGs. And there's a USB version that plugs right into your computer. This is not that one. This one plugs into 
my audio device here. And again, I'm sharing a lot of things that I have because I wanted to share with you what I've got and why I made these decisions, but you don't have to use this stuff. In fact, you could probably just go live with your phone to start out with if you wanted to. We're gonna get into content, we're gonna get into format in just a minute here, but I really wanted to make sure that we were set up for success here too. Is this the room where you record your Pokemon content on? Yeah, actually, if I were to flip this around, you'll get a sense of where I'm at. Hopefully I don't like. There's all the Pokemon stuff right over there. Yep, it's all in the same room. Just a different space, a different desk, if you will. Okay, so thanks for the thumbs ups, by the way. We are doing excellent today. If you wanted to help out the channel, a very quick way to do that is to take literally half a second, hit that thumbs up button for, um, to, 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 to bless yourself with no technical difficulties in the future, at least in the near future. So hit that thumbs up button for good luck. Okay, <laughs> so let's talk about um, uh, some of the other additional um, sort of fun things that you could offer or add on to your equipment list over time. Again, you don't need to start out with this, but this is what I use. So I use down here a couple boxes. This box here is called a Stream Deck. This is a really handy thing from uh, Elgato that allows me to do th certain things. So if I'm pushing this button here, if I push uh, this one here, it's like 2021 because I set that. Um, logo, live stream logo, Team Flame for the win is right here. So I can do that. I can switch between different scenes. Um, I can switch to computer here, or I can switch to, you see what I did there? Computer, there. Yes, I was looking up Pokemon stuff. Um, then I have some other things here. This shows me how many people are on live right now. There's 105 people live. I can mute myself in case I need to sneeze or something, which I never do anyway. And I can just kind of end the stream there using those buttons if I wanted to. That's the stream deck. And you can actually program that to do anything. Like if I just wanted to open up, uh, you know, my email, boom, push a button, there's the email. But I use it for streaming because while live, I can change between different scenes and you can use it on all that kind of stuff too. So uh, that that's kind of cool. Thank you, Stephanie, for the link. And let me, oh, there, there we go. The other box that you saw here was the Rodecaster Pro. This is actually what I use for podcasting that I just essentially have brought into the live stream for my audio. My mic, my um, NTG5 shotgun mic is plugged in in the back here. This is where I control the sound of it. And if I do this, but here I come back, yay. Um, and then I have some sound effects here. You can program sound effects into your stream deck as well. Again, all through Ecamm Live, StreamYard, all those places. But this is what I love because I can um, do Bruh. that kind of thing. I can do the that. And my intro song is here as well. This is it's pretty neat. So those are some of the fun things that I use. Excuse me. Okay. So those are some toys that I have that can help enhance the live stream. And if you're going to do this for a while, start off easy and you can start to add on over time. I wouldn't do what I know I used to do and I know a lot of people do is like, okay, here's what Pat does. I'm going to buy all the things and then I'm going to do it. Because what happens is it either frustrates you so much and you feel inadequate or, or that you can't do it because you're trying to go to level 10 before starting at level one, or it might just be too expensive and you're like, oh, well, I guess I can't do it. Not true. You can start off easy, right? So there you go. Anita says, oh my goodness, I need to watch it go back again. Pen and paper, so much good information. Oh, you're welcome. I thought this, this would be helpful to brain dump on you um, because I know a lot of you were inspired by me going live every day um, want to try it. Uh, this, uh, definitely applies to, um, webinars as well, which is very useful, especially if you're in business and using it to pitch or sell anything or connect with other people. So yeah, it's, it's been really neat and really fun. So that takes care of the equipment and stuff. And over time, again, you can start to, uh, make little incremental improvements. You can start, you know, adding little, you know, experimenting with different things. I don't use this as much as I probably could and whatnot, but I, I try. I try and we'll see and, and we'll see what happens. What does this button do? Oh yeah, hey, subscribe. <laughs> that is just an animated GIF that I just drag and dropped in and I connected it to a button here. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Very cool. Okay. We're just warming up, baby. We're just warming up. Okay. Great, okay, thanks again. Uh, let's talk about what we're gonna talk about. So you got all the equipment, you're gonna go live, hit broadcast, and then what? Well, first of all, mentally, you just have to get over the fact that you're not gonna be perfect. In fact, I still make a lot of mistakes. And are you gonna let that hold yourself back from 
potentially reaching people, potentially allowing your community to connect with each other? I, I hope not. I hope we've talked about the mental blockages and the limiting beliefs uh, enough here on the channel to realize that usually we are our own worst enemy. And if you need encouragement, um, you know, I'm there for you, right? And hopefully the community here is there for you too. I know you are. So uh, we're all here to help each other and inspire each other. And hopefully I can lead by example. Now, I will tell you, I'm an introvert. And so initially I used to avoid anything like this, but to see the results, to see um, the connections being made, it's been absolutely incredible. And it's why I kept going after that first week in March last year and why we're almost at 365 days. I want you to visualize like what might be able to happen. Now, when you start out, you might go, well, I only have like four viewers. Great, connect with them, talk with them, use that opportunity to practice and tell story. And thank God that you're still practicing in front of a few amount of people before you actually go in front of larger audiences or start to attract a better crowd. And you're gonna start off small, but that's where you have the opportunity to connect with more of your audience and, and, and speak to them individually. Um, but let's talk about what happens when you hit broadcast, right? Well, even before that, we, we need to think about, well, what is the purpose of this particular moment that I'm going live, right? In many cases, it just might be access, Q&A, sharing behind the scenes, fun things, in which case you don't necessarily need to prepare. But if you are gonna go live, especially on a platform like Twitch or YouTube, you wanna have a YouTube thumbnail and a YouTube title in place so that people understand what they're getting into. This also helps because when you are live, YouTube is gonna try and send impressions out to people who they think are gonna find this useful. And this is why engagement is key within the live streams. We'll talk about engagement in just a minute. But this is why that's important because YouTube can do you a favor if they feel people are enjoying this. They wanna share that enjoyable content that's gonna get people to stick around in the platform uh, for, for longer. And they're gonna share it with people if you can give them what they want, which is keeping people around and watching longer. Ryan, thank you so much for the super chat. Thanks again for all you have done this past year. On April 9th, I will be one year since I launched my podcast that you encouraged me through your videos. Ryan, congratulations. You are incredible. Keep up the good work. Uh, we have over 100 people now, which is really cool. So uh, Ryan, feel free to shout out the name of your podcast in case anybody's curious and wants to check it out. So even if zero people watch, you still talk because there's still likely people who can potentially find that later. You can imagine how weird it would be to go live and just kind of sit there and wait. But here's the thing. What happens when you kind of maybe have one or two people come in every once in a while or what have you? Um, and then it's kind of like, okay, well then now you have this replay video. When a person watches the replay and you're kind of sitting there and just like waiting, no, you need to go no matter what, even if zero people are there, because this is a video that can be found later. That's the cool thing about live streams. These things can be repurposed for later, which is really awesome. So no matter what the topic is, you want to start off right away. No waiting, no versions like this. Imagine I go live now, right? Like Hey, everybody, we, are we on mic check? Hello, 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 welcome. Um, we're gonna wait a few minutes until we get a few more people in here. Hey, Poke Kinono, welcome in. Cool, we got Joel in, that's awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of dynamic mics, by the way. Um, Ryan, that's boring. It's boring for the people who just get there, but they're there and they're there already and that's cool. But what about the people who watch this later? If they watch this later and you're just like, hey guys, like, it's just like, what? Um, okay. Now, Kathy here asks a good question about countdown timers. Countdown timers to start the show can be really great because they can kind of get everybody ready and there's a lot of channels who do that before they go live. Unfortunately, YouTube includes that in the video after the live stream's over. In which case, yes, it's a little bit better than just kind of that weird intro, but now a person has to sort of scroll through and if you have a countdown timer, at least they know when it's gonna begin, but still it's not the primal, primary experience, primal, primary experience that you wanna offer people. Ideally, you just wanna start right away. You just wanna start right away. Um, I have used a hybrid on the Pokemon channel though. I use a hype reel or an intro reel, one that's heavily edited and cinematic and emotional, inspirational, wh whatever you wanna call it, that gets people ready. And if they miss that, then that that's it. That That is the countdown timer, but it gets people hyped up and I'm training my audience to wanna come in on time, which is really key. But if you just start out, you might be wondering, well, nobody's there. Like, what am I gonna say? Well, talk to the people who are coming later. 
I even used to go live and say, hey, for the replay viewer, I know you're watching this if you're watching this right now, because uh, the live audience isn't here yet. Just want to say thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button. Okay, and as people come in, welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about live streaming, and I'm going to take you from start to finish, from equipment to programming to even how to end this and repurpose this stuff later. So make sure you stick around. And again, welcome in, everybody, and then you can start saying hello to people's uh, names and, and whatnot. Um, when you get into it right away, that's good for the replay viewer, but it also gets people in the room to go, oh, okay, like we're in this now. Like there's no waiting, right? Now you can refresh the audience, reminding them what this is about, right? And I, that's actually recommended live because some people are gonna come in later. And again, for those of you who are coming on, uh, live right now, we've had a few more people come in. We're talking about live streaming, everything from start to finish. If you missed the first part where we talked about equipment and setup and limiting beliefs and things that might hold you back, well, you can go back and rewind or watch this later. But right now we're talking about after you broadcast, what do we do? How do we keep people engaged? What do we talk about? That kind of thing. So that's where we're at right now. Now in the beginning, very important, if there are people there live with you, mention their names. The most beautiful sound to a person is their own name. And this is what Dale Carnegie said in his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I remember watching Darren Rouse live. It was the first live stream I ever joined. He was in Australia. I was a big fan. I stayed up till 3 a.m. to watch him. And he called out my name at one point, And it freaked me out in such a way where I couldn't even go to bed anymore because it was so cool to hear a person who I just was learning from actually call me by name. And even though it was virtual, it felt really, really good. So say people's names, it makes people feel really, really good. This is something that um, you know is a skill to kind of re remind yourself to do, but I think it's really, really important. And that's why I love to check in with the chat every once in a while to see what you're saying. Um, I personally can't read every single, every single person's thing anymore because the audience has grown that big, but I know some people who are so good at that who keep people feeling like everybody in the chat is getting noticed by that creator. And when you're just starting out, that's what you wanna do for sure. So. Thank you again. We got GTO, Travis, the Roamer, Hip the Hoopia, Hip 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 the Hoopla, Hip Hip Hop Anonymous. Uh, thank you for that. So, like a regular video, and again, it doesn't matter where you're streaming. You want to provide a hook in the beginning. Very important. You want to get people to know. Well, why do I need to stick around? What is the What is the point of all this? Now, if it's a Q and A, again, you have a little bit more room because you're just fielding questions. And what I would do if if you're going to do a Q and A. I would have a few questions already prepared ahead of time for those moments where you haven't gotten a question yet. And again, when your audience grows bigger, there's an endless amount of questions that you can answer. I've never answered everybody's questions here on the stream uh, ever since this started because I already had a baked in audience. But if you're just starting out, yeah, it's great because people not only hear their name, but they get their question answered. Now they're, they're in, they can become a super fan. And I have to sneeze. Please don't do this to me. No, it's going away. Why does it do that? What a tease. Anyway, <laughs> darn it. That would have felt really good. Um, answering people people's questions is great. It's an easy way to just kind of have the content be crowdsourced, right, from the questions that are in there. But there's gonna be moments where you might not have questions. So you don't wanna just be there like, okay, um, where's the next question? Let's just wait. That's not cool either, right? So, you definitely need to make sure that you have something to talk about. So I would either write down bullet points maybe on a post-it note before you go live, even if it's an ask a question type of situation and ask me anything. Um, and ideally, perhaps you've let people know about this ahead of time so that you do have a crowd there. You can, you can promote these things ahead of time. Um, have some stories in mind or have common questions. You know, you can even say things like, okay, now feel free to ask your question in the chat. And I love to say, make sure it says, question in all caps. If there's a large amount of people, this is ideal because then you can see the questions versus the chat. Uh, this is why I like Zoom for office hours because I, I can have questions in the questions box and chat in the chat box. But on a, on a live stream, it can get crazy sometimes. So I often recommend that if you do have a question, type in the word question in all caps, followed by your question. Now, if there aren't any questions coming in or you're waiting for the next one, you can just go right into a story. Just go, you know, while we wait for another question, I wanna tell you about a time when I ran uh, a Facebook ad campaign since that, that's what we're talking about today. It was actually the last one we did and here's kind of what happened. And you're just talking and teaching, that's very authoritative. Um, you might be able to say something like, all right, while we uh, wait for the next question, there are a few common questions that actually come in that maybe you're already thinking about. And one of those questions is, how do I reduce the cost per click on my Facebook ads? So let me just answer that question. You can you can literally ask your own, you, you can answer your own questions and it still can become very, very valuable, right? 
Ryan says, this is great. Let's let's move into a little bit of like mannerisms on camera, right? So no, number one, if you have a mic like this, this is this is a big pet peeve of mine. If you don't have a mic that is directional and you know that you move around a little bit, like if this mic is here, if this mic is here, I would I would be required to to sit here, right? But if I'm in a live stream and I'm trying to engage with my audience, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be moving around a lot, and it's gonna not sound very good. It's not gonna sound very good, and that reduces the the impact of what it is that you're saying. So be careful. You know you want to make sure that you are in a place that you can sit comfortably or stand comfortably. I know a lot of people who do stand because they get a little bit more energy in that regard. But whatever it is, like just be aware of that. Number two. If you're a ticker like me, I have some ticks. If I have a pen, I don't even know that I'm doing this. You ever like catch yourself doing this or kind of like just, or I mean, you might be talking about something and you're like, all right, so you like, don't like just get away from that uh, as much as possible because again, that is something that you subconsciously don't even know you're doing. Um, number three, when it comes to connecting with the audience, the camera lens is everything. The camera lens is the eyes to the soul, if you will. And it's very, very weird to look not at the screen while you're talking because the screen is where all the action is happening. But imagine that I'm talking to you like this. I'm looking at myself right now. I might be telling you the most impactful story, but it's not as impactful as it could be because I'm looking down. Like, and it almost looks kind of rude, right? Like, no, I don't want to look at you. I'm going to look down here. No, no, no. Right? You don't want to do that. But... The lens. What do I do? Here's what I do. Take a post-it note. You cut it out in the shape of an arrow. And then, boom. Well, you don't want to cover the lens. But you can cut out an arrow and just point it at the lens to remind you to look there. And after maybe a week or so of doing this live or, or, or a month, um, depending on how many you do and how often you, you kind of train yourself to look at the camera, you just can't help but look at the camera anymore. And it's just something that you get to bake in over time. So the camera lens is the window to the soul. But you don't always have to look at the camera. You can play around a little bit. Like, let's say, for example, that I'm just telling a story. I might look off into the distance while I'm telling it. And then when I come to the punchline, because it was cheese. And now it hits a little bit harder that way, right? I don't know why I said cheese, but uh, yeah. There you go. So you can play around. Um, what, do, what do you do with your hands? Now, I think a lot of people do this with their hands. They kind of clasp them or, 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 or um, put them together like this when they're talking, um, or they might kind of do this this thing when they're talking. This is, this is what we call a security blanket. It, it's a way that we can read. If you're a public speaker, you know that these are signs that a person might be a little nervous. Um, depending on where they put it. Uh, actually, if it's if it's a little bit down below, it's, it, anyway, there's a whole thing in terms of body language, right? You could look up some stuff. But for me, I like to use my hands because I have, if I have my face on camera and I can tell a story and that's cool, but I can actually enhance the points that I'm saying. One thing to know though, is that typically it's opposite. So if you're, if you're going from left to right, what did I just do? Left, which is actually the right side, to right, which is actually the left side. So I have to like do the opposite, I think, right? So left, to right, even though this is my right, this is the left. So that's something that's crazy. Uh, Poke Kinono says, second question, how important is showing your face in a live? Um, it's not the most important thing, but I, I think it's important to at least, number one, when you start your live, to show up to say hello, so that people can know who it is that's there speaking, teaching, or inspiring, or motivating. But you don't always have to go there. You can go to your, um, you can go to your computer, right? And here is, again, another feature of Ecamm. I can take myself out if I want. I can still talk and engage, and I can show people, you know, hey, go to, I don't know, um, Deep Pocket Monster on YouTube, and here you will see my mystery box video or whatever that will play, which has 139,000 views, like, whatever, right? Like, you can still engage, but I think popping in between face and slides, face and screen, that overall adds an element of professionalism, pattern interrupts, and production that is fairly simple to do, especially if you're using a tool like a Stream Deck to switch back and forth between those things. So it can work, but again, I think it's important, but it's not required. There's a lot of people who it might scare them a little bit to be on camera, 
And you might just want to do a screen share, a live stream of a slide deck, in which case maybe you just choose your best image to put on the title deck. And then you go through and people can kind of run it that way. Dominique, long time, no see, amazing to see you still doing live streams every day. Cheers from Slovakia. Thank you so much for the super chat, Dominique. I appreciate you for that. Over time, especially if you become consistent, you're gonna find that there are things that the audience really likes, especially as you experiment and try additional items. So for example, when I get a super chat, which you can do on YouTube and Twitch has its own version of that, getting bits, if you will, uh, you can do some fun things with that. And so for example, I love to just play the, the yay sound and people enjoy that. It adds another pattern interrupt. It adds another element or a flavor to something. And that's pretty cool. Uh, so again, you can have fun. This is your show. You could do whatever you want with it, right? You can have layovers when you, when you finish the stream and at the end of the stream, you can go, Bruh. and it just becomes like part of the culture of what it is that you do. This can be done in regular YouTube videos. We reviewed Squeak's Game World the other day and every one of his videos starts with him like zooming in and zooming out. And he just goes, hey, what's up guys? And he just kind of comes right into it, right? Peter McKinn, what's up, right? That's how Peter McKinnon starts his videos. Casey Neistat starts his videos with time-lapse of New York and then he goes into some crazy story with amazing cinematography to go along with it, right? So you can do things in many different ways and try it out. There's no one right way to do something, but how do we engage with our audience all the way through? So including the audience in decisions, asking the audience questions and getting them to participate is really cool. Let me know in the chat with a yes if you enjoy when people who are hosting live streams ask you to participate and you get to feel included in something. Hook me up with a yes in the chat. That's one easy way to do it and I hope you do that if you do. Number uh, two, if you have a choice, hey guys, tell me A or B or one or two, which one do you like better? And then you start to hear this and you start to like um, see the answers and then you can start reading off people's names. You can start to actually like have group decisions being made and that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can, um, you know, of course you can highlight people's questions and stuff. And again, that's another thing I love about Ecamm is I can, I can bring people on like Reflexio who says, uh, what's up, Pat? Good to see you, Reflexio. Now look at the chat. Yes, 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 right? Yes, yes, okay. So we all agree, and now we all agree. We're in this together. We're, we're live streaming. We are participating. Uh, there's a Poketuber who um, does this very well. His name is PokeRev. And every once in a while, I can just see in his brain, he's just like, oh, um, I'm going to involve the chat in this decision. So here are two packs that somebody bought. Which pack do you think is gonna be better? Pack A or pack B? And like people go crazy because they wanna feel like they participate. What happens? When pack A is better, everybody who had pack A goes, oh my gosh, I was right, I was totally right, yay. It's almost like a little game show, right? When you feel like you're involved in the game show, it works really, really well. Have you ever watched a game show on television alone, yet still, when you know the answer, you shout it out, right? That's how just in tune we are as a audience to participate in things. And in my book, Superfans, I talk about the importance of having people feel like they're included or invested in something, because here's the truth. When they're involved, they're invested, okay? When they are involved, they are invested. So throughout your stream, it could be about anything. See what you can do to sort of open it up to the audience every once in a while. It's not just about you. And in fact, it's not about you at all. You're just the guide. You're just the lead. Maybe you're the talent. Maybe you're, you're the entertainment, but you are in this with others live. And that is very, very important to understand. Now, yes, you can tap in other people. You can bring other people in. If you're using Ecamm, you can use Ecamm's live uh, guest interview feature, which is pretty cool. They just provide a link that you can offer and then a, a person will pop on with you, which is really cool. Excuse me. Then you can also uh, involve the audience in their answers and you can show them on the screen, like I said. But that's always a great thing. Now, I don't necessarily live bring people on the audience, although we might end up doing that in the future, uh, maybe five days in the future. We'll see what happens, but that should be really fun. Wow, let's, we watched Ma Let's Make a Deal yesterday. COVID totally changed. I haven't seen Let's Make a Deal, like a new one. Tina says, PokeRev is so good. When one person says, this card has a Charizard, he goes with it. Yeah, I love that too, right? And again, there, it, it, there's some advantages that we have in the Pokemon space with like things that are closed that we open to reveal what's inside. Like in other industries, that's, that's like the holy grail. We want things that hold people's attention and keep people around to the end. So that's kind of built into uh, into that. Maple points, this is great. This is a great maple point, by the way. It's irritating if they aren't teaching anything but not engaging with the audience at all. Like, are we just a journal and something to feed your ego? Talk to the audience. Yes, absolutely. High five for that one. 
And again, that's another fun thing that I do. Just like I got this sound effect and we just mess around and play around a little bit. Sometimes I get the whip out for anybody who's trolling. And then we kind of just, again, have fun, you know? And that's the thing, you, you make it your own. Because the thing is, if you approach this live stream thing to try to be like somebody else, it's not gonna work. You just gotta be you. Embrace you, embrace your weirdness, embrace your quirks, and have that become a part of it. Because even if you're teaching and you're educating, you are doing it. And nobody's like you. You are 100% the advantage here. And so just keep that in mind. Now, there's some other things that we could talk about related to live. What if you get a question that you don't know the answer to? You could A, avoid it, or B, bring it up and try to find the answer, or C, bring it up and just admit that you don't know the answer. All of those things work. You have the ability to have the show go wherever you want. So if you do find a question, unless like everybody is supporting that person's question and says like, hey, why are you avoiding this question? Then yeah, maybe you wanna address it. But it, you could potentially choose just not to answer that. Now, if it's very obvious and you wanna use common sense in your gut, if it's very obvious that like you've answered everybody else's question, but that one person's, then yeah, that might not come across very well. But I actually like to play in the world of number two or number three, the idea of bringing it up and going, you know what, I actually don't know the answer, but let me find it out. Or, and this is very important if you're a public speaker and you ever do a Q&A, if somebody asks you a question in the audience, live, in front of people, and this pertains to live streaming as well, don't pretend to know the answer. I've, I've, oh my gosh, I remember watching somebody live at Blog World Expo a number of years ago, and they were asked a question, and it was just so obvious that this person just didn't want to admit that they didn't know the answer, so they were talking and going in circles, and it was, it was just bad. I would have much rather this person go, you know what, that's a great question. I actually don't know the answer to it right now, but I'd love to learn and figure out what the answer is. Um, I'll find out what the answer is, and I'll talk about it on Twitter later for you, um, but let's move on to the next question, and then you kind of just move forward from there, right, if that makes sense. Right. I smell something good. I think my son is cooking burgers. He's he loves burgers. And he was excited because we bought some burger patties at the store the other day and he's going to uh, cook them. And he's never cooked a burger before. He's starting to learn how to cook. He knows how to cook eggs now and omelets and things. And, uh, you know, we're trying to teach him more life skills um, because it wasn't until college that I learned how to do laundry just to give you some perspective. April always makes fun of me for that, by the way. So what did I just do there? I just took a little left turn. I smelled something and I wanted to talk about it and that's okay. So I think some of the live streams that I see where people kind of like always stick to like, again, you do you, but you have room, it's live. Number one, things happen. So if something breaks or technical difficulties happen, just know that that's probably gonna happen. If it doesn't, then you know, congratulations. You are one of the rare breeds out there, but there's gonna be technical difficulties. There's gonna be a person while you're giving a very professional thing on camera, and then your baby walks in the room, and then the mom comes in to grab the baby, and then the other baby comes in in the little roller. Do you remember that? I was supposed to sneeze again and it went away. Why, that's so, so bad. Now, obviously you don't wanna just kind of completely flip back and forth and not have any direction, but it's okay to have something happen or you get, yeah, distracted, just go with it. And then you come back to it, right? Uh, that, 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 that can be very, very real life and it makes it more realistic. It makes it more relatable. It makes you more relatable. I don't know if you remember that BBC thing where the babies were coming in the room and the mom was like trying to get the babies out during a live call and the guy was still trying to be very professional. He was like putting the kid away and trying to get him out of the room. That's one way to do it, but I, I'm like, you know what? If the kid comes in the room, just be like, you don't plop him on the table. I mean, this was my lap, boom. Hey, this is my son, okay, let's keep talking. And it's just like, go with it, right? Like this stuff happens in real life and so it's it's live. Um, that's the beauty of live. It's not expected to be super produced and perfect and, and, and highly edited. It's not edited at all. So things happen, just go with it, right? Just go with it. We all wanna see the sneeze. Maybe that's the mystery box. Will I get a sneeze within the next 10 minutes? I don't know, we'll see. Look at light when you wanna sneeze, it works, really? I'm like trying to look at my light. Anyway, lighting is also very important, by the way. If you are going to be live streaming, um, you wanna get some lights that make the room nice and bright, but aren't canned lights from up top. You do not want overhead lights, not at all. You want a nice sort of, um, 
filtered light to come at you if possible. There, there is a bunch of equipment that I talk about on that live setup page, patflin.com slash live setup, or better yet, the cheap free option is actually to look at a window. So if you want to set up a nice, a nice live stream area, face a window, have the camera point toward you, and you'll have this beautiful, nice, coherent wash of light on your face. And, and that typically will be very flattering. That will uh, look really good on camera, right? A ring light can work too, although a ring light can be quite harsh and look a little bit more Hollywood or, or makeup artisty. And that, if that's the look you're going for, that's cool too. But uh, natural light from a window is the, the cheap. We, we call it uh, the window filter. And if you're ever at a live uh, event and you're trying to take selfies or pictures with somebody, just be like, hey, uh, let's go to the window filter. And they're like, what? No, let's just like face the window and then, right? And then you're good. You get, you get a, really nice, uh, a really nice wash on your face. No direct sunlight though. That's harsh. We don't want, we don't want that. Um, although I wish I had direct sunlight now so I can get that sneeze out. All right. You put the dog on your lap. What are your kids chop liver? <laughs> Cool. Let's see. Now, other things that you can do within the live stream to engage people is if you are in teaching mode, try to, like in any presentation, set these things up with stories. Stories live and on a podcast work really, really well. And I've known this to be the case so much that I've in fact put background music to my stories. One time in band camp. So, Having that become a pattern interrupt works really well. And if you're even gonna go live, maybe even on a webinar or on a live stream and teach something, set up those lessons, set up those punchlines, set up those uh, strategies and tactics with a story first. Because what happens when you tell a story? People get really interested, they get really excited about it, right? So you can go there. If you wanted to go a little bit further in the production of your actual you know, time going live, you can actually have different segments like we talked about yesterday, different parts, right? Maybe the first part is the teaching part and the second part is Q&A and you can let people know up front, okay, at the half hour mark, we're gonna go into Q&A, so make sure you stick around so I can answer your questions. Now there's a reason to stick around and it feels a little bit different. It feels like two shows in one instead of one long big thing, right? Ha <laughs> Bandcamp. I did go to Bandcamp. I went to Bandcamp nine times. Crazy things happen at Bandcamp. All right. <laughs> cool. Now, one thing I would recommend that I don't do all the time, but can work very well, and this is just video 101, give people a reason to stick around to the end. And so sometimes this is much easier than others. On Fridays, it's very simple because on Fridays we play games, we have some fun, and that's kind of fun too, just having, if you're gonna go live a lot, you know, like daily, I like to have just like a separate day just to cool off a little bit. And Fridays are fun because we do giveaways and, and, and offer fun prizes. Um, I use a tool called the Wheel of Names, which is really fun because, I mean, who doesn't love a wheel? Wheel of Names. So the Wheel of Names, these are the words that were uh, crowdsourced because I have a secret word. Again, that's another thing that I was like, what would be fun and weird and silly and very Pat Flynn to do in a live stream? Oh, let's have a secret word. Okay. And I already said it earlier because I remembered. Anyway, who doesn't love a wheel? We don't even know what this is about and we still are like, what is this? The winner is... Agrophobia. So you could use the Wheel of Names to do some fun things, right? Maybe it selects the topics that you're gonna talk about, which is really interesting. Maybe you put names on there for giveaways. Uh, those kinds of things work really well. Now on Fridays, it's very you know inherent to why people should stick around to the end because that's when the giveaways are, right? There's another Pokemon uh, YouTube channel called Royalty Gaming, po uh, Royalty Gaming Pokemon uh, with Sagar, who he gives away something at the end of every streams. And I gotta tell you, it works because what if I'm the winner this time? So those are some little strategies that you can use, but you can also say, you know what, I'm gonna save my best tip to the end because it's gonna require a little bit of a demo. So make sure you stick around and you can mention that every once in a while so that people do stick around to the end. And again, the more people that are there, the more engagement there is, the more interesting um, factors there are. A few other things that I wanna offer for you. Number one, having moderators. Uh, when you're just starting out, if you have maybe a viewership of 15 or less people, 
then you probably don't need a moderator at this time because you have enough time to see the chat and to um, fix things in case anybody's spamming or to remove posts that may be not great. Um, you can go into your settings on YouTube and on Twitch and type in words that you don't want people to see. So I put all the bad words on there. I also put Bitcoin. I also put uh, WhatsApp, which I've seen in the comments come out from a lot of spammers. So you can always include more things over time, but those are things that just any sort of like foul language is just not gonna show up anyway. And I think YouTube has its own filters too. So you can set that up under uh, your creator studio settings inside of the community settings area. But eventually you might want to get to the point where you do have moderators. And I love the idea of having some of your own audience who seems to show up all the time. Your super fans, your friends who show up to, you know, who, who, who would volunteer to do it anyway. Um, every blue person you see in the chat right now is somebody who had seen the stream, who I've just kind of recruited and asked, do they get paid? No, <laughs> they don't get paid but they get recognition. They feel like they're a part of something in moderators. I just can't thank you enough for what you do, all of you, for keeping the stream intact. Because what happens is as you grow bigger, there's a lot of, of bad stuff that can happen in terms of like, you know, spammers and, and people disrespecting each other, um, you know, people sharing links that they shouldn't. And the moderators, they just kind of like, you know, can hold those questions uh, away from everybody else. Uh, or, 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 or not let people see those questions. They can time people out if, in case you're being bad. You can go to, uh, to, to Pat Flynn prison for five minutes before you uh, come back out and hopefully learn your lesson. So the moderators are great and you can promote from within. Uh, people feel special, they feel honored. And I'm honored to have uh, all the moderators here. Um, Kathy, uh, Grandma Goody, Stephanie, um, uh, Peasant Uprising, Karma Cashflow. Uh, and just Samson, you guys are all incredible. So so thank you so much. That's what the blue is with the little uh, tool bar or the tool uh, wrench next to them. So yeah, uh, at least appreciate them, at least recognize them. That that And oftentimes that's enough. Oftentimes that is absolutely enough. Hairdresser says, just watch the latest video, CPM goals. Thank you. Thank you, Hairdresser, I appreciate you. Uh, I do have a video that just popped up and this is where you can do your ending, right? At the end of the stream, you wanna thank people, obviously, but you can let people know what to do next. And I think this is something that I can always get better at. It's something that I do in my current videos, the pre-recorded videos, but live stream, this doesn't have to be the end. You can instruct people to go do something next because people have built a relationship with you. They spent some time with you. You can ask them to come back tomorrow and tell them when to come, which is what I'm gonna do right now, especially because I go live every day. So I'm gonna go to, Tomorrow, we are going to go live at 10.30 a.m. 10.30 a.m. Pacific, that's 1.30 p.m. Eastern. 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. We have a special guest coming in who's gonna teach us more about YouTube. So very much along the same lines of what we're talking about today, but being able to enhance it even further. We're gonna talk about analytics. We're gonna talk about keywords. We're gonna talk about other things that whether you're going live or pre-recorded on YouTube, how to master that. I'm excited for tomorrow. So we're gonna to start tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Pacific. For right now, however, as I'm uh, about to end this, um, there is a video that just came out earlier today about YouTube, specifically how much money I made in 2020. I reveal that income. I don't make you wait till the end. I have some other things to make you wait till the end, but I do share that probably within the first minute of that video if you wanna check out just to get an overall dollar amount and um, how that video uh, channel, how this video channel performs. You can check that out. So um, Don says, you're going to miss us. I absolutely know that's true. I'm gonna miss you for sure. Um, but again, this I think will make the times that when we do go live even more special. I'm not going anywhere. You'll see me in pre-recorded videos and live every so often too. Uh, my guest is Sean Cannell. Nope, it's not Sean Cannell, but great, great guest. So thank you so much. Here's some love for the moderators too from uh, Miss Queen B here. Uh, and you are, you, you are all incredible. Thank you again for your time. I hope that this was useful for you to get the Pat Flynn brain dump in the order of start to finish here for a video, some big tips, some small tips, things to think about. And hopefully this encourages you to just try because really that's what it's about. You can't get better till you try. You can't get better and improve until you do. So go and do and know that um, you got this, you got this. So I'll see you tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Take care. I appreciate you. And as always, Team Flynn for the win.
This is the Income Stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the Income Stream. Hit the like button. Kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The Income Stream. Hit the like. With Pat Flynn. <laughs> can we get to 100 in the next one minute? Let's see. Anyway, thank you so much for today. I had a great time uh, sharing some of what I've learned over the last 360 days. And make sure to come back on Monday. If you can't come back tomorrow, come back Monday anytime between 9 a.m. Pacific and 3.05 p.m. Why 3.05? Because that's a 365-minute stream that we're going to do. It's going to be so much fun. Thank you. Take care. I appreciate you. And peace out. Bruh.